Hello and welcome to Study IQ. I am your friend Rahul Saigaonkar. The agenda for today's discussion is connected to international relations. Whenever we talk about international relations, our prime focus would be on Indian foreign policy, isn't it? If anybody asks you, has Indian foreign policy been successful in last 75 years? The answer would be yes and no both. If you look at certain areas, Indian foreign policy has done very well. For instance, I would say Indian foreign policy has been quite successful in the Southeast Asian region, especially since the emergence of Look East policy. We have done extraordinarily well in the West Asian region. We are getting crude oil, we are energy secure. The West Asian policy has been successful. We have been quite smart there. We have not stepped on anybody's toes. We have balanced the fault lines in West Asia very well. In the last decade or so, we have been doing quite decently in terms of neighborhood first policy. If you ask about relations with major power, they have been transforming since last decade. With the coming of Modi administration, India's image globally has improved a lot. Prime Minister Modi himself has focused on foreign policy. He has visited multiple countries. He will be visiting United States of America soon. So these are some of the positive aspects. But if you look at some other areas, for example, Latin American region, India has largely neglected this particular area. And today's discussion is about that negative aspect. We are going to discuss about India-Latin America relations. You can see the heading here. India is rising as a leader of emerging economies. Indeed, true. And it is time, it is high time that India ally with Latin America too. In fact, this article was very interesting because there are some suggestions for you which you can use in your answer writing here. And the agenda here is discussing India and Latin American relations, not specifically with respect to one country. But if you ask me, sir, is there any specific country that we need to focus from exam perspective? I would say the Latin American region or predominantly South America, there has been no major or a superpower emerging from there. But one country, if we need to focus here from a bilateral perspective, that would be Brazil. India-Brazil relations, they would be important for you from exam perspective. But we will be focusing here on the Latin American region over, overall, right? So let's begin our discussion with a simple question. The question here is, India-Latin America relationship has been infused with a new life in recent years. Now, this is the observation. You will understand why this observation has been made in this interaction and you have to discuss the nature and potential of the relationship between India and the Latin American region. To attempt this particular question, you will get excellent fodder in this video lecture. To get to know all that information, stay with me till the very end. All right, let's begin. But before that, there is a very good news because I have been getting so many messages from many aspirants who are asking that sir, we want the prelims to interview batch or we want a program completely in English because till now, whatever programs you are running on study IQ, they were mostly bilingual. That means English, Hindi and English together. But from June 19th, our first batch, the complete English batch is starting. And again, as I always tell you, prelims to interview batch, it is the most comprehensive program because we will be hand holding you from your day one. We will be preparing you for prelims, for mains, for interview. If you clear your prelims, all the expenses of your mains residential program would be taken care of by Study IQ. This entire program has been designed in a very comprehensive way and priced at a very affordable range to 9999. To get more discount on this, you can always use the code Rahul Live. You can do it when you check out. Just use the coupon code Rahul Live on the website or on the app. You will get max discount. Right, do it very soon. June 19th. Mark this particular date. Right, let's begin our discussion. As I told you, our interaction is connected to India and Latin American region. The first thing that you need to understand is, sir, what is this Latin American region? If you look at the map, you'll understand Latin American region. It comprises predominantly of South America. There are 13 countries from South America. Yes. Southern part of North American continent, that is the country Mexico. Then the countries connected to it, Panama, Guatemala and the Caribbean countries. And many times we use the two terms interchangeably, Latin America and Latin America and Caribbean together. So this particular region, it is, it is a thriving region. 
the population is increasing there 650 million more than 650 million uh, the latin american people latin american caribbean people stay here a very diverse area very dynamic area with different languages different cultures different tradition and economically also it is quite thriving we all know south america has large resource mexico has many resources the caribbean region is known for natural resources especially maritime resources and the the gdp of this particular region is over 5 trillion dollars so it is a big opportunity for india as well but the question would be there in your mind sir why the term latin america what is the reason for this latin america now we all know india was india was colonized by the british right they justified it by telling white man's burden and the same concept applies towards this side also the entire continent of south america caribbean region even some Mex some regions from mexico guatemala all these were colonized but not predominantly by the british they were the other european powers spanish people portuguese french they controlled many areas here and that is why it is called latin american region because it is a region where the romance languages or in general languages they are predominantly derived from latin you all know the church during the medieval times when the colonialism was at its peak it used converse or it, it basically dealt through latin itself so latin reached here and from latin many of these languages are derived here and as i told you these areas were ruled by the spanish portuguese and french and i would say all colonizers are same all right there is nothing like a good colonizer or bad colonizer colonialism itself is bad all right apart from that the term itself does not have any precise definition commonly it is used to describe as i told you the entire south american continent the southern part of northern american continent it does not constitute canada and usa they keep themselves separate then mexico and the caribbean region basically it comprises of lac latin america and the caribbean region so we understood the area the next question sir what has been a relationship because as i told you in the recent times there has been some sort of infusion or an attempt toward reinvigoration of the relations between india and the latin american region but we need to understand a small background of how the relationship has evolved when we talk about india and latin america we can divide the time period into two phases the phase from our independence that means from 1947 till the end of cold war that is 1947 to 1991 approximately i can say 1947 or the or the 20th century and the 21st century would be the dividing line all right so after 1991 after the end of ussr disintegration of ussr we can see we also transformed our economy we underwent lpg reforms liberalization privatization globalization reforms so that can be considered as a dividing line but but more or less i can say 20th century and 21st century that can also be done so what happened what happened during the cold war era that means what hap what was the nature of the relationship during the 20th century see india was a new country was a nascent was in the nascent stage and first prime minister of india jawaharlal nehru he was quite idealist he wanted to focus more and more on making india as a leader of asia right that is why he focused more on on the asian side and that's why we can say there was some sort of initial neglect towards the latin american region jawaharlal nehru was prime minister from 1950s from first election till 1964 if i'm not wrong and during his tenure he visited only one latin american country that was mexico in 1961 this itself shows that there was some sort of initial neglect towards the latin american region now add to this there were some problems also because in 1947 india pakistan happened right the partition took place and many latin american countries they supported pakistan add to it we also had a complexity called as goa right goa was goa was added into india through military action you know and goa was portuguese and you you know portuguese is one of the prime languages in this particular region so brazil brazil argentina many other countries they sided more or less with portugal during that time so there was some sort of disconnect but this this disconnect slowly and steadily reduced because in 1961 india was one of the pioneer leaders in setting up non-aligned movement in the bandung conference 1955 
the stones were laid for the non-aligned movement. And in 1961, eventually in Belgrade conference, NAM came, came into picture. And this NAM, it attracted the South American or the Latin American countries. Why? Because if you look at this particular map, you will understand at one point of time, US policy was such that they, they said America for Americans. And that is why they used to intervene a lot in these areas. You must have heard about a pejorative term called as banana republics. Banana republics mostly found in many of these Latin American Caribbean region. I would say predominantly in Caribbean region. They were heavily dependent on United States of America. And US more or less openly intervened or I would say interfered in their internal matter. So they were looking for some sort of an outlet where they did not want to choose USA or USSR. And NAM was a very good alternative for them. So, 15 countries, 15 nations from the Latin American Caribbean region, they joined NAM in 1960s. So, slowly and steadily, our interaction with this region, it improved. But still, it was a phase of Cold War, so sides could not be taken. But a real breakthrough, I would say, it came after 1991 or in the 21st century. India, it accepted the LPG reforms, liberalization, privatization, globalization reforms. India now became an emerging economy. India now stood as a leader of the third world, as a leader of NAM. It battled for South-South cooperation. As a leader of NAM, it, it, it became a voice of the third world and many countries in this region are from the third world. So, India started more and more interaction towards this, predominantly with Brazil. If you look at some of the regional organization that started at the cusp of 21st century, IBSA, India, Brazil, South Africa, BRICS, right? In, in the 21st century, the idea, it started, to, it started to form from 2004. Eventually, BRICS came into picture. So, our relationship with BRICS or Brazil, I would say, it transformed more and more. We also have extensive energy relationship, right? Since, I would say, 1980s, Venezuela being one of the countries. And this area is very rich in resources. South America, I would say, it is, it is the, the copper bowl of the world, especially in Atacama Desert, in Chile. Chile is basically known for its copper extract. So, we import a lot of copper from there also. And in the 21st century, with many countries, we have a strategic connect as well. One of the prime example being Brazil. And that is why I told you, if you have to prepare for one country in a bilateral way from this particular region, that would be Brazil. So, I hope you have got a good overview of how the relationship have transformed. But what is happening now? Because I told you there is some sort of an attempt at rejuvenating the relationship with Latin American region. Now, from the time the Modi administration has come, from 2014, the foreign policy has been transformed. We do know Modi administration has brought many changes. For instance, the Lugis policy has been transformed into the Act East policy, focus on South East Asia. The West Asian policy has also been quite successful. Modi personally or brand Modi personally has been working towards West Asian countries and have told you that we have not stepped on anybody's toes. We have good relationship with Israel. We have good relationship with Saudi Arabia. We have good relationship or decent relationship with Iran also. So the fault lines have been balanced very well. The Modi administration has also brought focus on the neighborhood or the neighborhood first policy. It is reaping benefits slowly and steadily because the time when we neglected the neighbors, China gained ground at that particular time. But slowly and steadily, we are transforming that as well. And with the major countries, India has been doing very well. But one of the neglected areas was Latin American region, even after the Modi administration came. It was quite intermittent. In fact, from 2014 to I can say 2018, Prime Minister Modi, he visited many countries. But only thrice he visited the Latin American region, twice as a part of BRICS summit and once in the 13th G20 summit in Buenos Aires in Argentina. But since 2018, we are looking at some sort of a transformation in Indian foreign policy also towards the Latin American region. Since 2018, there have been many high profile visits. I remember in 2018 itself, it was I think June or July, right? President Ramnath Kovind was on a visit towards Latin American countries. He visited at least three to four countries. Then there was Vice President Venka and I had who visited many Latin American countries. Recently also, S. Jayashankar, the External Affairs Minister, he has 
he has infused some sort of energy especially towards latin american region right he visited many latin american countries recently also just last month i wouldn't say last month per se in april 2023 there has been a drastic change and what change is being observed now if we look at latin american region in the indian foreign policy files or in the ministry of external affairs the latin american region was given or the charge of latin american region was mostly with a junior minister you do know that there is there is a cabinet minister or the senior minister minister of external affairs there is also minister of state for external affairs and the files of this particular region were mostly with the junior minister but this has changed since 2022 why because g20 presidency is with india and many countries from this region are part of g20 especially three countries argentina brazil and mexico now they are under the purview of indian foreign minister the senior minister that means s jayshank it's a drastic change isn't it that means now we are focusing recently a couple of months back there was india latin america relations conference in which s jayshankar he said that we are very much hopeful and optimistic of progress towards our relationship with latin american region and last month not last month but as i told you it's the beginning of the june so two months back or april 2023 s jayshankar visited many countries he visited guyana panama colombia dominican republic no other foreign minister had ever visited these countries so some sort of infusion is happening with respect to the latin american region add to this there is a very positive trend when we look at india latin america relationship especially in terms of trade and you all know trade it trade it is very very important now karl marx used to say economy is everything he gave economic he gave importance to economy to a large extent right so once the trade starts that means the relationship can thrive so trade relationship with latin american region has reached a record in 2022 so for the first time for the first time we are close to 50 billion dollars we reached almost 49 billion dollars if i'm not wrong in 2014 i do remember that in 2014 it was somewhere around 49 billion dollars but this time it is an all-time high we have reached the mark of 50 billion dollars bilateral trade between india and the latin american region which is quite huge all right so if latin america were a country then it would be our fifth largest trade partner after us china and the other countries especially the oil exporting countries and we are looking at a positive trend in 2021 it was about 42 billion dollars and there has been almost how much almost i would say 17 18 percent of rise when we talk about this rise in one year 17 percent or 18 percent growth is quite huge great great so this is happening but you all have a question in mind sir okay you are, you are telling that india latin america relations have reached or trade relations have reached 50 billion dollars where is china because i'm always interested in china right china is far ahead even in terms of latin american region china's uh, trade uh, in in 2021 it amounted to 450 billion dollars and we are somewhere at 50 billion this year there is a big difference but let's, let's not get into this but it's a positive trend for us. Now, you must have certain questions, sir. Why, why such great trade relationship in a couple of years? That means in the last two, three years. Is there something happening, something brewing up in terms of India and Latin American countries? There is already one of the schemes which is running, right? Indian government is running something called as Focus LAC scheme. Focus LAC scheme, it aims to enhance the trade between India and the Latin American Caribbean region. It is already working since many years. But... There have been some trends in recent times, especially if you look at one particular country, Brazil, the trade is skewed towards this. I told you our, bi our not bilateral, India, Latin American relations or trade relations are about $50 billion. The trade amounts to $50 billion. One third of this, it actually comes from Brazil. In 2022, India-Brazil re trade relations or trade, it peaked to $16.4 billion dollars primarily in terms of oil trade you all know india is a champion when it comes to pharma sector the agrochemical sector india is also champion with respect to the ites sector and all these exports can be seen here apart from the brazil factor there is one more factor for increase in trade in last few years especially the ukraine war now we have all discussed this before also ukraine was one of the major exporters to india of 
the oil, specifically the sunflower oil. And since the war began, sunflower imports or sunflower supply from Ukraine has stopped completely. So we were looking at some alternative and which alternatives came up here again, the alternatives from Latin American region, that means Argentina and Brazil have now replaced, more or less replaced Ukraine as the suppliers of edible oil, that is sunflower oil. If you look at the numbers from 2020 till 2022, it has almost doubled. In 2020, it was 2.4 billion dollars. Now, the oil import from this particular region has almost doubled to 5.6 billion dollars. This is one of the factors. Apart from that, there is another factor which is connected to inflation. We, we import a lot of metals and minerals from this region, predominantly from Brazil, Argentina, Chile. Mostly gold and copper imports, they come from South America and their value is continuously increasing. The gold breached 60,000 marks multiple times, I think, last year. So, the trade between these two regions, India and Latin American region, it has increased from $4 billion in 2020. It has almost doubled, more than doubled to $8.6 billion in terms of gold and other mineral trade. So, because of this, we are looking at a lot of positivity between India and the Latin American region. Now, the question is, can we sustain the momentum? Let's not compete or let's not look at the, the numbers comparison with China, but can we sustain this momentum with the Latin American region? Because there are so many challenges. Will the momentum be sustained? If we, if we cater to or if we resolve some of these challenges, probably yes. One of the biggest problems of neglect towards Latin American region is the distance. You all know now if India is here, then the Latin American region is somewhere here, right? Thousands and thousands of kilometers away. In fact, I am almost sure that there is no direct flight from India to any Latin American country. There is no direct flight. Why? There is issue of distance. There is also a problem of perception. In fact, many experts who are there from Latin American region, for example, uh, there is a uh, Badri Maharaj, right? Badri Maharaj, or you can talk about uh, R. Vishwanath, who is an expert from Latin American region. They all talk about this issue of distance and a problem of perception. There is a lack of understanding between the two areas about each other. Distinct cultures, distinct languages. Of course, there is a lot of the social disconnect and language barrier, which, which plays an important role in, in keeping these two areas apart. But you can argue. Sir, if these things are true, for instance, if there is an issue of distance, okay, I agree. You are saying there is an issue of social disconnect and language barrier, okay, I do agree with this also. But how is China managing all this? The Chinese have put in their efforts. Now, here comes the role of Ministry of External Affairs. If you look at the number of diplomats who serve in these areas, number of people who are engaged as language translators or in terms of human capital development for for developing relations between these two areas, India has been neglecting this arena and many experts do agree with us. These things can be resolved. But apart from that, there are some other issues when it comes to, when it comes to integration, there is a problem of integration on either side. Now, let me explain you this particular point. Now, is the South Asian region integrated? You already know the answer. We know what is the situation of SARS. It is in shambles as of now whatever may be the reasons, right? Pakistan's obstructionism, etc., whatever be the reason. We do not care about that. But regional integration has not happened in the South Asian region. And the Latin American and the Caribbean region, it is a very small area, right? It's a very small area. Yes, of course, population 650 million, different cultures, different traditions. But they're also in such a small area. Now, South America itself has 13 countries and 13 countries have not come together. In the South American and the Caribbean region or the Latin American region, you find so many regional organizations. You find OAS, you find ACTO, Andean community. In fact, we have, we have trade pacts or preferential agreements with SICA. We have agreement with CARICOM. We have agreement with Mercosur. We have agreement with UNASUR also, with the CELAC also. In fact, India does close work with SICA and CELAC. But just look at this list. Don't even need, you don't need to remember this also. But what I'm trying to explain is that both the areas on one side south asian region the least integrated region in the world and the south american region there is a lack of integration now what happens here if there is lack of integration then the trade is hampered 
instead of trading with the entire area now try to understand the irony here i am trying to explain india latin american region and i am telling you lack of integration it creates problems between these two areas in terms of trade so what i have to do i have to go for bilateral relations i have to go for bilateral trade agreements trade pacts we have signed it with brazil we have signed it with mexico we have signed it with argentina but not as a whole area that is the problem right apart from that there is a lot of checkered history when it comes to south america and their support for pakistan especially argentina you must have heard about something called as coffee club we talk about united nations security council reforms and in the security council reforms there is a group of g4 right there is a group of g4 there is india brazil there is japan right uh, there are, there is other there is germany there are other countries right who support expansion of united nations security council but on the other hand there is a coffee club because of which the consensus is not coming and if you look at the members of coffee club of course pakistan is there obstructing india's entry into unsc but what are the other countries that you find here you find argentina you find mexico there you find colombia there you find many from the latin american and caribbean region so there is a lot of checkered history so if we are able to resolve this probably we can we can uh, look for some sort of optimism and hope and why the external affairs minister s jayashankar mentioned that we are very hopeful and optimistic is because there are many positive trends first of all non alignment connect is going to help india more and more because of this non alignment connect even today we are convergent on many matters let us take example of ukraine itself on the ukraine war india has been fence sitting and many of the latin american countries are also fence sitting we have a lot of convergence when it comes to climate finance when it comes to the world trade organization wto negotiations india has been a leader there so a lot of convergence on many global issues there is a lot of support even from the lac region against or anti against terrorism anti terror support is also coming apart from that trade relations they keep on growing whatever issues are there we need to resolve them but we are looking at some sort of positivity ukraine war is no way near the end so next year also we will be importing a lot of edible oil especially sunflower oil from argentina and brazil we are already importing minerals crude oils and we are also exporting mind you we we bring crude oil we send refined products a lot of refined products to these areas we send gems jewelries to these areas we are champion with respect to pharmaceutical exports agrochemical exports and the ites exports so trade relations will keep on growing we also have a lot of convergence when it comes to grouping brics now brics ha has been a, a very standpoint a big standpoint in terms of indian foreign policy success brics has come out as an alternative against i would say the bretton woods institutions also brics now is talking about brics currency so let's wait and watch what happens apart from that we have indian diaspora almost everywhere because of a sheer population indian diaspora is everywhere there are lakhs of people lakhs of expatriates we find in guyana suriname french guinea at many places even in the latin american and caribbean region so these are some strong points apart from that the high level dialogues are also continuing you saw that s jay shankar he visited many countries which were never visited by any foreign dignitary or any indian dignitary uh, there right not any foreign dignitary but any indian dignitary there for the first time foreign ministers meet to many lac countries and this is going to continue there are counter visits also which are happening from the lac region we'll wait and watch for those so there is some sort of hope and optimism when it comes to india and latin american region but there are certain suggestions also let us end the discussion with suggestion because we started our question it was a very open ended question you have to discuss the nature and the potential of india latin america latin american caribbean regions relationship so some suggestions since india is having this presidency of g20 we can do a few things or we can bring some initiatives one of the ideas from the article that we started with was the proposal of something called as bima bima brazil india mexico and argentina an initiative which we can start to g20 it's a it's a it's basically a common subset of the g20 the bima countries which can uh, which can enhance the relationship between india and this particular region apart from that india can also float an idea of india and latin american digital partnership 
India has been a pioneer in terms of some of the digital initiatives. The world is right now flummoxed. How India is managing UPI? There are so many examples. India has been a champion with respect to UPI. India has been a champion in terms of bringing 5G services. I can give example of ONDC. There are so many examples where we can collaborate with this area. Apart from that, India can also work towards a Latin American Indian climate partnership. We have convergence here, especially with respect to finance. We can talk about climate finance because most of these countries are developing countries or underdeveloped countries and climate finance is extremely important. In the Caribbean region, the rise in sea level can cause catastrophic destruction. So, those countries need finance for adaptation and mitigation because of the climate change impact. Apart from that, we already have energy connect with this particular area, but we need to bring some sort of sustainability in the trade partnership, especially transform the crude and mineral towards human security means focus more and more on education, focus on people to people connect, focus on cultural exchange. As I told you, there is a lot of misunderstanding or, or lack of understanding of each other's cultures. Now, there is a predominant poet, diplomat poet, Abhay K. He has been, he has written so many poets, right? His poems, they try to bring that connect between India and Latin American region. So, one of the examples, right? So, what we need to do is we need to transform our trade relationship towards more and more sustainability. Apart from this, there is one more idea. I would say this is more of a personal idea because I do like this thing because the Latin American region, it is known for its football. So, there can be some sort of a football connect between India and Latin America. In India, we do have many football fans. Of course, the fans are completely skewed towards cricket. Right? In India, cricket is everything. But we do find a lot of interest in football, soccer as well. And we know Latin America is known for its football giants. There's Brazil, there's Argentina, Messi of course. In fact, you, you do not believe. Sunil Chetri, right now active international players, he has scored almost equal goals in international matches with Messi, right? I think the top scorer is right now Ronaldo, the active international players who have scored more international goals in, in, for their country. Sunil Chetri is in that list. So, probably some sort of football connect can come between the region. I am not talking exactly about Argentina, but Latin American region and Indian football connect. That can also enhance our people to people connect. Just an idea. So, you can refer or you can mention these things in your answer writing. I hope you have got a good overview about India Latin America relationship. If there is any updates on this, because the G20 summit is going on, on the sidelines of G20 summit, which is going to happen in September now in 2023, we'll keep an eye on that. If there is any sort of development or any traction over India Latin America relationship, we will have a discussion again. But this will give you enough fodder to attempt a question if there is anything in between uh, regarding India and Latin America. Thank you for watching this video. And you do know that if you have liked this video, you can always follow me on this particular ID at the rate Rahul Sai 222. If you have any messages, any complaints, feedback, if you want to connect with me, if you have any questions, queries, doubts, how to prepare, sir, what about the English batch that you mentioned? If you have any questions regarding that, you can always message me on Instagram. I do respond on Saturdays and Sundays at on this particular ID. Thank you for watching this video. Jai Hind.